problems cast tutorials uh, if i had a b z f i j and whatever i don't know and you wanted to check if this so let's call it a string or let's define it as a string and you wanted to find out if this string has z now the question is how would you do that now let's create a new file to find out in this video we'll be talking about membership operators let's just call it membership.py and these are two functions or these are two words keywords called in and not in so let's say we have a name a name cats tutorials and let's simplify it and say we just wanted to find out if this string has e now how would you do that you'd use any one of these to actually find out and i just want to use the simpler one which is in now we want to print the result before we print the result i just want to explain each of these so let's come to explain these so now within we want to check is a certain element which is totally up to us we can fill this with whatever it is that we want to find and more specifically that will be a sequence so sequence can be a string it can be a specific value or any other part of a larger system or larger string a larger list or whatever the case may be more formally known as an object so strings lists and all of those things that we discussed are formally known as objects in python and we now want to look through the object and actually find out if a specific box which can be filled with anything is in that object so how would you do that in this case what we want to do is to find out if this string has e we can visually see that it has e but how do we check in code and this is how you do it you'd say that you want to find out if e is in then you'd mention the name of the variable otherwise if you wanted to use this string exactly as it is it's called a literal and you just say e in and then you'd write it in full but now it's stored in a variable or it has a variable name so we don't necessarily have to write it in full again you're going to use the top one you want to find out if e is indeed in name we can see that it is so the result that we expect is a boolean to tell us whether that is true or false so these return true or false both of them return true or false now the other one just checks the opposite not in so for example we don't have a y in this string so if we say y not in name it will return true because y is indeed not in name but if we use something which is in there and say not in name for example e e is in there so it is in name so if you use not in it will return false because it's inside name so once you wrap your head around that logic then you should be good to go in will return true if the element is indeed inside the object not in will return true if the element is not inside that object so that is the summary of it so as i was saying we want to check whether in e is in name and what we're printing will be returned by this in so it will return the result of that whole statement which is true so e is indeed in name as you can see it's over there and now if we change this to y y is not in name so expect it to to return false that is what happened over there and if we say y not in name that is true because y is not in cats tutorials and if i do that expect to get a true so y is not in there e is in there 
So if I say E not in, it will return false because it, it is indeed in there. So just a bit um, hard to wrap around the first time, but once you understand what all of these mean, then you should be good to go. And you can use this not just with strings, you can use this with tuples, lists, and dictionaries. So let's take a list as an example. Let's just erase all of these and let's talk about cars. You can have a set if you want, let's just use a set. Even though the output of a set is scrambled around, you can still use this operator because it doesn't look for a specific position, but it just looks for whatever it is that you're looking for. So I'm just going to write a few cars which are manufactured by Toyota. And now we want to check in this set. So this is a set of cars manufactured by Toyota. And I want to check is Prado in the set cars. And the answer is true. You can see it over there. And that is what we expect as a result. So true, that is true. And is the Supra not in there? That is true as well, because we don't have a Supra in the set. So that is true as well. But if you mention something that is indeed in there, then that should be false because it's actually in there. It, it is. Now you can apply this to dictionaries as well, but with dictionaries, here's a slight difference. So in the previous video, when we were talking about dictionaries, we actually used a student as an example, and that would be this over here. So I'm just going to copy it and take it to this file and paste it. Okay. So now the difference with the dictionaries is you only check the keys and not the values. So you can only check the keys and not the values. So when you check in dictionaries, you're only going to check if a specific key is in the dictionary. So for example, you can say name in student and it should return true because the key name is indeed inside the student dictionary. But if you write the value of that key, it will not be identified and it would say false. So cat is not in student because it's not a key, it's a value. So this in only works for keys in dictionaries and that is something that you have to keep in mind. So if you have an object, if you have a variable, a string, a list, a tuple, a dictionary, or anything which can be considered as a sequence, you can find a subset or you can find a small portion of it and you can check whether that's inside is inside the bigger portion, if I can put it like that. So this is what the membership operator if it's able to check, if it's able to check if a, sp a specific element is present or if it's not present in the other direction. So I hope you find this video useful. This is all I wanted to talk about. If you like the video, just give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.